Hey, what's up, everyone? I am Daquan, otherwise known as Power Dragon, and Dominary United just dropped, and they gave us some sweet dragons. And since it's in my name, obviously, I wanted to build a dragon deck. So let's hop right in and see what we can do with dragons using a lot of those new Dominary United cards. Here's the deal. With this deck, we're trying to do a few things. One, you got to hit some early mana, because we're going to be playing a lot of dragons, right? So you want to get to four and five mana as cleanly and as quickly as possible. Obviously, we need a reasonable number of dragons to take advantage of the things we can do with dragons. And then you're still going to need some reasonable removal, right? Because you're going to have to get rid of the early stuff so when your dragons actually hit, you're not too far behind, right? Because you're going to be spending all your time just building up to these dragons. So to start out, we're playing three strangles. Easy to cast, one mana. Sorcery speed, but we don't really care. It's fine. Then we're playing three infernal grasp, just solid removal. And then we're getting into, like, our mana package of things, effectively. So we have four Lanawar Loam Speaker. This produces any color, which is great. So it can get us from two to four. And it can also make a creature late in the game. So if you don't need the mana and you get this on, like, turn six, seven, eight, whatever, you're like, fine, I can at least attack with a 3-3, three, three, and that's something, right? Which gives us a huge advantage over other mana creatures. Then we're going to play three Black Market Tycoon for the same reasons, right? It can get you from that two to four mana point. In a pinch, you could actually create the mana at the end of turn, take a couple of damage, and have it float. So that could help you out as well. We're playing three Mirror Breaker. Usually just use this for mana and for filtering our cards to some extent. But the filtering works a little bit better now because we have Rivers of the Claw. So if we have to discard a dragon, say in the early goings we're looking for that fifth land or something, Rivers can actually let you play dragons from the graveyard, which is kind of awesome. But Rivers is a new card. It's 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Has Menace in case you need to attack with it, which is awesome. You can tap it, add 2 mana of any color, but it has to be spent to cast dragons, which is great because that's what we want to do. We're trying to cast dragons in this list. And then again, if you've had dragons die or you've put stuff in the graveyard, you can actually cast them. Now, they will get exiled after they die the second time, but you don't really care at that point. Uh, then we have Atsushi, a 4 mana dragon. Other than producing the treasure, which is nice, it does give us access to our top two cards, and that's pretty big too here. And it's kind of cool if you're at Sushi Dies and you have Rivers and you get to look at some cards or get some treasure, and then you get to play like at Sushi plus something, because you get to play the other one out of the graveyard. Moonvale vale Regent, easy to cast, 4-4 four, four flying, possibly going to do some extra damage because we do have multiple colors in this deck, so it could work out to our benefit. And then uh, the Elder Dragon War. This is a card I talked about a little bit on our preview videos. By the way, if you haven't seen those, you should probably go watch those. We have a pile of them. This is one that, like, it can destroy things two or less, which, if you notice, except for Black Market Tycoon, that wouldn't kill any of our stuff. You can discard any number of cards and then draw that many. So if for some reason you have dead lands in your hand or something, you can get rid of those. Or you can just go straight to making a 4-4 Dragon. And because it has read ahead, you can actually look at any section you need at any point, which is pretty good. Then Rith Liberated Primeval. This is one of the cool cards from the set I really like. It's 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Has Flying, has Ward 2, gives all your other dragons Ward 2. But here's a very interesting thing on this card. At the beginning of your incept, if a creature or planeswalker opponent controls was dealt excess damage this turn, create a 4-4 four, four dragon creature token with Flying. Now, understand this is important. And this is one of the reasons I almost played an additional Strangle. Is because if you deal excess damage... Period. It doesn't say from a spell. It doesn't say non-combat. Just if you find a way to deal excess damage to a creature or planeswalker of the opponent, you get a 4-4 dragon. And that dragon's also going to have ward too. And then, of course, because we're playing dragons 1-Z Atora, it's big. It can sack to finish the opponent off, whatever. Though, also, could be a cool situation where if you do have a Rivers out, you could sack something that you could replay next turn and then set it up to be sacked again. And then, of course, 3 Shivan Devastator. I know this is a little kid magic card, but since you're generating extra mana from Loam Speakers, Tycoons, Fables, Rivers, there's a chance we're going to play this on like turn 6 or 7 for 7 and then just blast the opponent out. Then lands were kind of all over the place. We got Takanuma, Beseju, 3 Haunted Ridge, 4 Sulphur Spring, 1 Deathcap Blade, 4 Rockfall, or 3 Rockfall Veil, 4 Carplusion Forest, 4 Zeotaurus Proving Ground, and 3 Plaza of Hope. Uh, Plaza of Hope could work because we do have a fair amount of legendary things. Uh, we've got Rivers of the Claw, Atsushi, uh, Rith, Zeotora. Possibly, if nothing else, we can get Colorless out of it. But more importantly, you can also, with our excess mana, if we're not using it for anything, we can exile this to protect one of our legendary creatures as well. So something to think about there. Uh, yeah, ooh, this actually... Yeah, we're going to keep it, and I'm going to draw an untapped land. We're going to make that happen. 
and we're gonna draw an untapped land. That's all we gotta do. Doesn't even matter which one it is. Actually, it does sorta matter, but not really. All right, we failed. Not the worst thing, though. We can still play something next turn and shoot a thing. Only downside is we don't get to play at Sushi on this turn, which would have been kind of nice. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and play this uh, Loam dude. And then I think we're gonna go ahead and kill this. Oh, cathartic pyre on my dude. That sucked. Well, you know, I'm not usually a fan of doing... You know what? I'm not. I'm going to do this. I lied. I was about to play a Devastator for a couple, but nah. I'm going to do this in case we draw Rift. We can just play Rift next turn. Dev's got a pretty active crew here. Uh, Boy, what are we doing with this, though? This has Menace, so that's annoying. One, two, three, four, five, six mana we can use... What if we just go with Atsushi here? And then we pass. Uh, mostly because if they're forced to remove a thing before they get to attack with the professional, that's cool. Otherwise, we're willing to throw both of these in front of it. And worst case scenario, we just end up with a bunch of treasure. Um, all right. I'm willing to take two one time. Let's generate some treasure. Ooh, Rivas, you are neat. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can do this for six if we want to. Though this is probably better here, and it gets rid of this dude, so we don't have to deal with him later. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll generate some treasure. We will play this. We're just going to start at chapter one. Kill some things. And then we're going to go ahead and back that up with the rivers, I think is fair. And uh, no attacks. We're going to keep this professional facebreaker at home unless they want to spend some cards. All right. Well, that didn't do a whole lot, did it? Um, yeah, let's get rid of this and see if we can find something better. Well, that's not really better, to be honest. But that's kind of... Okay. This is decision time because the opponent's stuck on mana. So we can either just... I don't know. Let's see. We don't have any dragons in the yard yet. We could do this for four, for five. And then I'm going to pass. And the next turn, we're going to start attacking. I'm just keeping them light on mana because they obviously are... Okay, well, they've been finding mana now. So they've got all the mana they want. Let's see what they do with it. Veteran. The soldiers get plus one, plus one. Other soldiers. This is a soldier? Oh, it just this gets from just having more creatures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That didn't make sense. Uh yeah, alright. So we're gonna attack for some big number here. How big do we want it to be? I think we wanna go with six and four. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, none of those block flyers. I'm like, okay, sounds good. Uh, we can go ahead and play this one too. Just have another blocker. I don't really care. Uh, we'll keep the new one, let the old one die. We will generate cards. All right, cool. And because of Rivas, we can also replay that at Sushi that just died. Okay, I was thinking they might have, like, a uh, jet mirror, which would have been tough, because they would have got trampled, but it wouldn't have been quite enough for them to come over at the time with their mana. But uh, here we get to block some things. Uh, that's 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we might as well just block up. There's no reason not to. Opponent's just at 10. We've got plenty of flyers still left over, so let's do that. I guess if I was going to chump block, I should have blocked the eight instead of the three, but whatever. <laughs> not not that big of a difference, all things considered. Uh, however, this is cute. And we get to wipe out everything but the face breaker. Yep. Boom. Get in for lots many. Ooh, that was good. Nice. 
And then I think the plan here, just going to play that, will have the option of killing a one drop if they play it. I don't know if we'll need to. All right, well, that's not going to matter much then. Let's go ahead and play this so we have access to an Infernal Grasp. And then we'll play Rivers. I don't know if Rivers will survive. And then we'll just hope for the best after that. Oh, Goro, Goro. All right. We'll at least kill you. If we get hit with something big next turn, so be it. We'll find a way to deal with it. Oh, I was going to play Rivers, but dang it. All right, let's do this. Because if the Fable token at least dies, I can discard something to try to file, find a land and play an Atsushi. If push comes to shove, I don't know. Is it wrong that you both miss and don't miss on uh, non-effect creatures and sets? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right, let's see. Because they might they might be forced with a decision here: either kill our token or play a thing, right? Because their turn might be something like, realistically, it could just be like play Reckless Stormseeker or something here. Hey, thanks for the follow there. John T. Albane. Much appreciated. Also, Jack Wise Games. Thank you. Uh, Jack Wise Gamgee. I see what you did there. Ah, that's cute. All right. So there is a commies player. All right. So they that's what they were deciding, whether they were going to kill something or not. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, we knew that was one of the outcomes. We did find a land, though. So now it's do we feel the need to actually get rid of something? I am going to decline, actually. And we're just going to play this. Because if this dies, we can just get the treasure. And then the treasure lets us play Zia Tora. So, and if we just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and they killed Zia Tora, so be it. Like, I'm willing to eat that. Alright, Renegade. Uh, if you attack, I'll block opponent. If you would like to spend some mana, I'm not opposed to it. However, they weren't into that. Totally understandable. Getting a second Rivis here is not good, but also not terrible. Especially since we have a Devastator in hand. So the next turn we could play at least a five power Devastator, possibly a six power one. Okay. And I think we just, um, I'm going to pass. Mostly because we're at the point that they're going to be playing something significant here. So I want to see what that is. And give us a chance to block things down. Yeah, we're not worried about that. We didn't have anything worth copying right now anyway. They were either legends or like a devastator. So that doesn't do anything. Kalan and Elena, real problem though. Real problem. Uh, we're about to throw one of these civas into the sun, I think, with uh, Zia Tora. Oh, uh, wait, if this dies, we're not going to get anything for this. Eh, still worth. Still worth. <laughs> like, whatever. Still worth it. Um, Now, what are we looking to do? All right. This is kind of the only real play here. Hopefully, you don't have a way to pump your Lana and Elena. They don't. All right, excellent. Good job. Good job. Okay, that's least of our concerns. That we can deal with. We are happy with that. Uh, now it's just, do we go Rivers or just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? I think we're just in on it, y'all. We're just going to go 6. F it. If you got something, you got something. If we die, we die. Opponents at eight. Uh, we'll decline. We would like to attack you with that next turn. And that's important because if Zia Tora dies, we have another Devastator to attack alongside the big one. If we were to have sacked the Devastator, then they killed Zia Tora, then I'd only be able to, if I don't draw a land, I'm only able to attack for like four here. This way, I don't think we lose because the chick definitely can't block, so that's not going to kill us. Yeah, that Devastator's too small to do anything. Yeah, that is it. Yep, we're at four. 
Definitely not dead is the answer. And we're going to make a 4-4 here. And get in there with all the dragons. There you go. Woo. Okay, as it turns out, this hand's not the fastest, but totally worth keeping, I think. We have two early removal cards, and then we get to play Fable, and that seems mostly fine. Um, yeah, since our spells are sorceries, it doesn't really matter, even with our lands, because this costs two. So if we do this, this comes into play tapped first, and this will be untapped, so then we can have the option for this. Uh, fortunately, our opponent didn't play anything here, so we kind of get a free pass. Which is excellent. Uh, they left blue, white, green open. So I guess we play this and it gets stopped? It's unfortunate. Nope, it doesn't. Does our token... Oh, it's binding. Alright, that's fine. Yeah, we get a token, we lose our enchantment. But that's okay. We can live with that. Now, the question is, do they let us get a treasure off of this? They may not. This could be it. This card's super good, by the way. Leyline Binding, also from the new set. This is going to be one of those cards you're going to see everywhere. Uh, just like you saw there, because the opponent had two of the lands that count for each basic land type, they're able to play this for just one. So they had all five land types accounted for, which is pretty rough. Uh, not a lot we can do about that. So here... This is interesting. We have two choices here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then we're just going to attack and generate that treasure. And then this gives us the ability to kill something if they play it this turn. And then next turn, drop one of these dragons out. Don't know which one just yet, but one of them. Opponent opted to do nothing there. Interesting. All right, let's see if we can attack with this little duder again. They are going to let us. Which feels a little suspicious, I'm not going to lie. So let's play this. See if it gets through. I mean, they've got all the different colors sitting over there, so anything can happen here. Now, the reason I played this one first is that if it dies, we can actually get treasure from it. Which wouldn't be too bad. Nope, they're just going to go hunt for a land and gain some life. So they're playing a domain deck, most likely. But they've already got all their basic land types accounted for. So all their spells are going to be cheap, and they're all going to have maximum ability here so this is really good since we're playing with new cards you kind of get to see the opponent also playing with new cards which is very cool lots of new cards there Ooh, joda yeah we want to kill joda joda is a real problem like for real for real uh, makes all legends bigger and gives them the ability to do all kinds of crazy things that we don't like so we're gonna attack um, man, do I want to spend all my tre opponents at 12? Yeah, let's go for it. Worst case scenario, Atsushi dies, we make treasure, and then we play Zeotora after the fact. So I guess my opponent's playing five color legends with the domain theme is kind of what the plan looks like here. They still have four cards and a lot of mana here, so I'm not going to take anything for granted. There's another Jota. All right. Well, we're going to try to kill that one too. Play line. They're going to get rid of our Moonvale Regent, probably. Nope, they're getting rid of that sushi. Interesting. Moonvale region, I think, is the stronger card to get rid of there, but we don't mind, honestly. All right, let's kill that Jota as well. We will decline on Moonvale region because we like all these cards a little bit more. Ah, I say that. I kind of just like Zeotora more, to be honest. So here we put the opponent down to four. And they now have to get rid of our Moonvale Regent. Which, if they just kill it, is still going to deal one point from its ability. Because we'll still control our red. Permanent. Okay. Opponent's just cycling. They're dead. Not true. They were probably looking for another Ley Line. But, didn't matter. You know what? We're going to go ahead and keep this hand. Even though we can't do much, we can Infernal Grasp and then maybe draw something else to help us out here. And if we get a green, obviously we get Loam Speaker into a reasonable sized Devastator. That might be okay. We're on the draw, though, so we have two turns to even find a green mana. Which is alright. Uh, opponent did mulligan to six. I don't know how much that's going to help us. Well, there's the green mana we were looking for. Alright. Let's see how this goes. 
Uh, they may be waiting. This is the tough thing. Whenever they okay, they're just gonna impulse. Generally, a lot of times you'll see people leave mana open and wait, uh, just to see if they and it puts us in a spot to see if they want to counter something or not, and that's always a little bit tough. No way to know though. Sometimes. Uh, we will go ahead and play this just as the things. We can get green mana. Alright. Void Rand. Alright, they really wanted that dead. They took damage and went out of their way to kill it. Interesting. Well, if they want it dead that badly, we want another one. End the turn. We should be honest, if they're killing those and not these, that's kind of nice, so, you know. Um, now we do have a decision to make on if we just want to try to play... Do we just do three mana? Well, we can't... Even if we tap those, we won't be able to turn the creature in. Uh, ugh. I feel like whatever we choose is going to be wrong here, but... Yeah, all right. It's probably getting countered anyway. But it's best we can do. All right, they had to make disappear. We weren't going to be able to pay for that anyway. Uh, next turn, I guess we could do it for three. And if we think they have another make disappear, then we go ahead. Oh, actually, never mind. We're just going to do this for four. Because this is better. And now we get to leave mana up and possibly solve a big devastator. And we'll end the turn. Now, there is an argument to say we could have just paid for all of that with land. Then if it resolved, we go ahead and use the Land of War Loam Speaker to kill uh, to attack for three. Which probably is a real good play, truthfully. It's something to be considered. Now, if the opponent looks like they're just playing an Esper Control deck, I am assuming they're going to be digging for some type of removal, a sweeper. Who knows? Maybe a meat hook. Uh, lots of options here. All right, let's see what the opponent's got. You know, I'm half hoping we get to draw a Rith here. Oh, they just want to cut down, actually. And the main thing reason I was looking at a Rith being nice would be the fact that we would get to replace three cards here. Uh, now I'm a little concerned because I don't know what the opponent's removal of choice is here. Because let's say... It is a meat hook. Would they have waited to just meat hook next turn and get rid of both of our creatures? I don't know, to tell you the truth. That's what makes this a little bit tough. Um, you know what, though? I mean, risk it for the biscuit. No guts, no glory. We'll decline. I mean, we may just be about to lose both of our creatures here. I'm pretty sure we are, but... Okay, Liliana's not so bad, actually, believe it or not. Alright, so we'll sacrifice this, because it's going to end up dealing a point, which lets us kill the Liliana. Because we still have a red permanent when it dies. So that's not bad. Uh, let's attack with this. Let's... Hmm. I almost want to play this... All right, let's play it. And we're going to start on Chapter 2, and we're just going to discard this Infernal Grass. Because I feel like the deck we're up against, we're not going to get to use this card much anyway. So we'll just discard, then draw. And then I guess we could try to play a Loam Speaker. My opponent wants to Spell Pierce. All right, we'll pay for it. I mean, if they have another Spell Pierce, they just double Pierce it. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, that's actually pretty good to know that that's all their hand was. Like, that's not bad at all. And we randomly found a use for this uh, Infernal Grasp, as funny as that is. So, uh, do you have another counter is the question. I kind of want to be greedy here. Nope, they got something. Make this appear. All right, they're going to sacrifice their creature. Uh, they didn't sack anything when they cast it, though. Alright. Sure. 
Sure. I mean, this worked out okay. This Devastator's actually been doing a lot of work here. And the fact that you get to put it at different sizes is great, but that got us to the victory. Well, no lie, the new cards from Dominator United were great for building a dragon deck. I actually had a lot of fun with this one. So if y'all enjoyed it, feel free to build it. It's a lot of fun. And if you want to see other cool standard decks, feel free to check out my channel. It's just Power Dragon, just like you see here. And I have a lot of stuff there for you as well that's going to be focused on Dominator United. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.